What do we do? Help 911. Well, I'm here today to share. We all know probably the home edits organizing has taken over Netflix and uh, the bookstores. The books are everywhere. I love I love organization. I love rainbow organization. But we know in the classroom, things can't always be exactly perfect. We want it to be. Um, we have dreams and aspirations, and some people can make it happen. But how can we achieve a balance? <music> Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me, Abigail Peterson, along with ESGI, for this session about organizing. Organizing is a is something that we're always working on, right? Whether it's in our homes or in our classrooms, we're constantly buying new things, receiving new things, digging things out of the, the free pile at, at the, on the free table at school. So let's talk about how do we keep it all organized? Before we start, I always like to introduce myself just so you, if you're not familiar with me, you can become a little bit more familiar with me. So my name is Abigail Peterson. I'm the creator behind Kindergarten Chaos. This is my family. My oldest son just got married, so I am an official mother-in-law. I feel very grown up. Um, I have two other kids that um, one's in high school, a uh, freshman in high school, and a seventh grader. So they've been distance learning for the last couple years, and that's been an experience I know if you're a parent, you can, you're right there with me. And this was me in the classroom. I did a rocket, um, the book by Tad Hills, a transformation in my room. And um, just to kind of show that learning can be meaningful, but it can also be fun. So that's a little bit about myself. Take a look at these pictures and tell me what you think. I think we all at some time or another probably have felt either been in this position or have felt these two pictures where you are just bombarded with paperwork or or activities or things and you just feel crushed by them. What do we do? Help 911. Well, I'm here today to share. We all know probably the home edits organizing has taken over Netflix and uh, the bookstores. The books are everywhere. I love I love organization, I love rainbow organization, but we know in the classroom, things can't always be exactly perfect. We want it to be, um, we have dreams and aspirations and some people can make it happen, but how can we achieve a balance in that, within that organization? So I'm gonna give you some basic organization tips and then I'm gonna share some real life pictures and some ideas and products that have worked for me through trial and error in the classroom. So always start in one place. Now, when I first started teaching kindergarten, I inherited a classroom that had um, a, a closet, a really nice closet, but it was it had stacks of stuff in there. The teacher that had been in there previously had just left, didn't take very much at all. So it fell upon me to kind of go through everything and determine what I needed to keep, what was good to keep, what was worth saving or you know putting out to some other teachers, and what what I just needed to purge. So. I've been there, done that. I've I've had all the piles. I've had all the bins. And I'll show you a picture of that as well. But start um, by making three piles, a keep, a donate and sell if you want, and then a trash pile. And then create an inventory, make lists of what you have and what you need. I cannot tell you, and I know you can totally agree with me on this, there is nothing worse than you know, at a last minute art project needing cotton balls, but somewhere in the closet, you know that you have a ton of cotton balls. And then, and then you go buy more cotton balls. And then next spring, when you're about to do that bunny project, you're like, where are my cotton balls? So there's nothing more frustrating than knowing you have something or discovering you have something and buying more. So make an inventory of what you have and what you need. Determine your storage needs. This is going to be very subjective to every to each individual. Some people don't really have a preference on storage containers and storage, you know, um, pieces, and some do. Some want everything to match. Some don't care. They're happy to use old, you know, butter um, containers or Ziploc bags. Whatever, do always what works best for you. But hopefully, I can share some suggestions that will 
maybe work for you as well. Maximize your space. I know a lot of teachers, I have shared these organization slides and tips over the years, and, and I've had a lot of teachers come to me and say, well, I have a really small room. I don't have a teacher closet like you had. So what do I do? The best way is vertical. So go up. If you can, if that, that maximizes your space, you may not be able to go this way, but you can go up. So think about that. Of course, I know you have fire marshals and you have admin to deal with, but um, utilize the space to the maximum benefits that you have and then label everything. Again, labels are subjective. Some people like a label maker. Some people like cutesy labels. Some people can just put a piece of duct tape and put a name. Do what works for you, but if you label everything, it is makes your life so much easier. So let's jump into all of the things that we have when we are teaching, like this. Like we have all these principles that we use for our students, and what's the best way to organize them? I know in the past I've had that first year of teaching kindergarten, I didn't have a system, and so I had stacks of papers, and I can remember at the end of the year I had this huge stack sitting on my teacher table. And um, so I created a folder for everything. Now, I know a lot of, especially if you're a new teacher, you're like, this is so archaic. Um, I am a digital lover as well. I All my products are digital and are digital downloads, but then you do have to print them. And sometimes I like just being able to grab my folder about butterflies and I know everything's in there and I can just take that to the copy machine or hand it to a volunteer or the copy person at your school and and um, it, it's done and over with. So I just created simple um, folders with labels on them and you can see they're just labeled with um, with Sharpie and then I I had a filing cabinet and then I labeled that filing cabinet literacy math and writing and then themes and then I had one that was just a, a teacher one for myself that you know you put your purse and things in but then that way I also um, if you ever have volunteers or you ever have somebody in the classroom they can go to the literacy and look and say oh okay um, beginning sounds they can pull that beginning sound folder and there's activities in there this is again just for principles if you're wanting but I can tell you that this made my life so much easier having everything organized we're gonna move on to digital downloads. For those of you that only want digital and do not want anything printed, you only wanna print one at a time. I highly suggest, again, creating individual folders, just like a filing cabinet within your Google Drive or flash drive or your downloads on your computer, but having those individual folders and labeling them. So for instance, if it's a letter ID, if it's beginning sounds, if it's CDC, it has saved me so much time by having a folder and just being able to go directly to that CVC folder and not having to search. Because sometimes you forget the name of things and you're like, what is that one thing that I use for CVC? And it could be, you know, uh, butterfly friends and you forgot the name of it. But if it's in the CVC folder, then it's easy to access. So again, do what always works best for you, but creating individual folders, uh, labeling them by color or um, by grouping, that is also helpful. Let's move on to supplies. As a teacher of little learners, like many of you or most of you, we have lots of supplies. We have feathers, we have pipe cleaners, we have yarn, we have popsicle sticks, we have glitter, we have Q-tips and cotton balls and clothespins and all the things. And sometimes you need those things right now. Maybe you forgot in the morning or, or the beginning of the week, so you need to access them. Well, if you don't know where they're at or it's a big hot mess, it's, it, it almost ruins your day when you're having to scrounge for things. So what works for me is by, these are just dollar uh, plastic shoe bins that I labeled everything, again, vertical, so you can see they're four high. And I just put a label on the front of them and then I know, and again, if I, I can even have a student say, hey, can you go grab the pipe cleaners? And if it's in within their reach, they can grab the, the pipe cleaner box and it's all accessible, it's all organized. You can see this was my teacher closet, everything, all the glue was together, all the crayons were together. And then I had all of these supply bins. So it was easy, made my life so much um, smoother when preparing for projects in the classroom. Um, next, okay, so we all have those games, those Lakeshore games or games we print off from Teachers Pay Teachers or, or, or some you buy them from Ross or TJ Maxx, which is also one of my favorites. And 
where do you store them all? Well, I had a whole closet, like I said, full of games and activities and file folder games and things that I had created myself. But if, if it's all just jammed in a closet, it's overwhelming. Sometimes that can be anxiety producing. It's sometimes it can cause almost a depression when you feel just overwhelmed. And so um, one time I was like, I am done with this. I have tried a million different ways to organize and I just haven't found my groove. So what I had done was I pulled everything out and I organized um, everything by, by skill. And so I had rhyming and syllables and silent E and beginning sounds and letter ID. And then you have your math, you have your number ID and number writing and uh, addition and subtraction. Again, we're talking about little learners. So pre-K, kindergarten, maybe even first grade. And um, so I organized everything, I put them into bins. And then that way I knew specifically where to go to pull things for if we were working on silent E, instead of having to spend three hours going through and looking for that one particular thing. So organizing by skill is amazing, but let me put a little caveat into this. And that is that after I organized by skill, I was looking through, I can't remember exactly what it was, but I was looking for, um, let's say silent E, and I came across a pumpkin game. And I was like, I, I mean, can you use a pumpkin game in February? Sure. But a lot of us that teach little learners, we like to do themes. We like to do um, seasonal things. And so I thought, okay, I got to redo this and to learn from my mistakes. So what I did is anything that was generic that did not have a theme stayed in its skill. But if it was theme or month seasonal based, I created a bin especially for that. That way, if it was pumpkin, it stayed in, in October. If it was um, snowman and snow themed, it stayed in January. If it's gingerbread, it stayed in December. And then this made it so I didn't randomly come across something of another theme um, you know, in, in a different month. Again, it may not bother you, but it bothered me. So I organized by two ways, my, my activities by two ways by skill, if it was generic, and then by theme or month. And these are just um, plastic Sterilite containers that have snap lids. Again, they're stackable. I started um, using the ones with lids so that I could stack them because if you leave them open, like I showed in the previous picture, that limits how many you can have. So I started, I moved to this and um, then I put labels on them. And again, it makes it so nice for me to just be able to pull a themed bin and I know everything for the month of June of January is gonna be in that. I may not use everything, but I know that it's in there. So let's look at storage options. Now I presented on organization, like I said, many times and several, well, I, you know, 2020 kind of, I, it seems like everything is like pre-2020 and after 2020. So it was pre-2020 when I was sharing this and it was actually, I don't know, maybe 2018. And um, I was still figuring out my organization. Um, I feel like as teachers, we're always trying different things. Sometimes it works. Sometimes we're like, this is the greatest thing ever. And then it doesn't work for us. And that's okay. It's, it's, you're allowed to, to change your mind. I, I promise you that. So here's what's, here were some options that I was using and I thought were great. So I have it on this side, I have a six case organizer. So these are those ones, you see them, they sell them at Michael's and Costco and they're like the little plastic cases on the inside. I thought this was a great idea. I'm gonna put all my write the room, I'm gonna put all my read the room cards in here. I'm gonna have them um, organized by the month. It was, it was kind of a nightmare take up a lot of space. I mean, they're not that, they don't take up that much space, but it just, they're, I don't know. It was just, it didn't work for me. Again, I'm allowed to change my mind. And um, so at one time I thought this was a great idea. Then I moved on to, um, I, I tried Ziploc bags and Ziploc bags in the very beginning work, but then after a while they kind of get grungy and they kind of get, I don't know how to describe it, but I'm sure if you've used Ziploc, Ziploc bags, you know that feeling that they're just kind of grungy and and um, they kind of get worn and they're very inexpensive, but it just didn't, it, they, sometimes they tear. So I moved to 
like zippered pencil pouches. And my school district actually has like a teacher store where stores that have clearance items, they send it to and teachers can go and use points and purchase points to buy these extra things. So these zipper pouches, um, it, it was actually not the ones that, I, well, you can see the one that says storage, um, station storage ideas that has the little spoons, the pumpkin pie game in it. Um, it, it doesn't, it didn't really have a zipper, but it has like a slide. And so I, I purchased like at this, at the teacher store, probably like, I don't know, 300 of them. I, I purchased a lot of them and I was putting the little games. And again, it's just the pencil pouch size, put all the materials, you know, that, that were, that were able to fit in it. And those worked. But what I found was that the little, um, the little slide would break would break off it wasn't a true zipper it would break and so that ended up not working so I went to some zippered ones but those were more expensive and they were just one size so I've tried a variety of these and these are all great if that's what you want to use but I can tell you what has worked and what I've been using for like the probably the last four years and I absolutely love the best storage option are these little poly zipper pouches I purchased mine on Amazon they come in a, a variety of sizes. They have large ones, they have small ones, they have even smaller ones. Um, they have large enough ones to fit, sorry, hot mess express here. They have even large enough ones to fit a cookie tray. And this is has magnetic letters on it. So they have a lot of variety of sizes. They have a zipper on the top. They have withstood, like I said, the last four years I've had most of mine and withstood little learners' hands, lots of little learners playing with them, being put in and out of bins. These have worked the best for me. Again, this is my opinion, so, but it's a great option, I promise you, because it comes in a variety of sizes. And they lay flat. What I've also done is I created little labels to identify if it was a letter ID, if it was, um, you know, uh, counting, and I just use a hole punch and these little jump library rings, and I just attach it to the zipper, and it makes it so it's easy to identify and keep labeled, and it works really well. They are super durable, they're very compact, and they, they lay flat. So they're perfect for kids. They're perfect for any kind of um, place that you store your products, which we're gonna get to as well. So for instance, this is an Ikea Trofast bin and it has nine drawers and I'm able to put several different poly zipper pouches with activities within there instead of just one puzzle box. Cause we know puzzle boxes are very bulky. Speaking of puzzle boxes, I have tried keeping puzzle boxes and keeping the boxes taped for reinforcement. And it ends up always falling apart, getting stepped on, getting smushed and I'm retaping and retaping them. So I completely just got rid of the box except for take the, the picture from the puzzle, cut it out and you can tape it to the front of the poly bag. So all the pieces of the puzzle can go inside the poly bag and then just tape the puzzle um, picture on the outside of the bag, or you can even put it on the inside of the bag. And then that way the students still have the picture, but you don't have those bulky boxes anymore. Cause that's really hard at a station or when you're putting materials out, if you have more than one puzzle. So I love these. Um, for instance, these are a count and match game. And so there's like counting mats, but then I also have buttons for the counting. So I have a smaller bag with the buttons and then I, that I just put inside the count and match bags and it works like a charm. It's perfect. They're also, because they're zipper, they're easy for kids to um, open and shut. Uh, like I said before, with the other ones I was using with the little slide, sometimes those, um, those would catch and they would have a hard time. And then therefore the zippers would break, the little slide, you know, um, uh, you know, zipper type thing. It wasn't a real zipper, like I said, but that would break and it would get, you know, come off and it was just a hot mess. So this is the Ikea Trofast. And um, this has also been a game changer in the classroom um, for, or keeping materials organized. 
So this is um, what I use for math tubs. So there's nine bins and I can have um, pairs of students or, or trios of students to go to a specific bin and each bin has um, um, a variety of activities. Again, using those poly storage bags makes life so much easier and well organized. Here's another type of organization. I use this for literacy. These are, again, you've probably seen these, Joann's and Michael's and Sam's Club even has them. I think maybe even Costco, but these are the rainbow drawers. They come in a variety of colors. This is, I found to be one of those that you either love it or you hate it. I know teachers that love them, which I'm one of those, or I know teachers that are like, tried it and can't stand it. Again, personal preference. It's very subjective to what you like. Um, I found that teaching the students how to use them correctly and you know how to treat things. I've had these for uh, probably seven or eight years. Um, I had one drawer, uh, if you look carefully, I don't even think you can see it in the picture, but one drawer on the very bottom. Um, I had a student one year um, that had some behavioral issues and he kicked it and it cracked the drawer and we just reinforced it with tape on the inside and outside clear tape. Um, but these drawers have stayed in shape. They haven't fallen off the track or anything. So it's worked for me. Um, and they're great because you can put a variety of activities inside. And um, I had two sets. So that gives a lot of choice. And again, fits these poly pouches. Let's move to the library. The library, if you've followed me for any length of time, you know that I, I am big on uh, classroom libraries and choice within the classroom library. But just like adults, we as adults, we love to go into a bookstore. And some of the reason we like to go in the bookstore is I love true crime. So I want to go directly to the true crime section. I don't have to go through all the shelves in the in the bookstore to find true crime because there's a specific true crime section. That's what I like. That's what I'm going to go to. It's well organized. It's well lit. There's places to sit. There's places to um, enjoy myself and enjoy the ambiance of the library. And so that's how I choose to set up my classroom library. Everything is well organized. I purchased these bins. Um, now you can purchase them in bulk from like the Dollar Tree. Um, I purchased mine years ago from really good stuff a long time ago. I've purchased other brands. The really good stuff ones have worked really well for me, but I know of you can find them just about anywhere. But again, label everything because once everything is labeled, the, the students and yourself and anyone that comes in your classroom knows exactly where everything goes. There's not a question of, well, where do these go? Where does the Pete the Cat books go? Where do the uh, Martin Luther King Jr. books go? There's no question. There's a label and the books go. The books also have a label on the front. So the students know exactly their picture labels. They go right back in there. This has made library in my in in my classroom so much more organized and user friendly for the students again because they want to go it's well organized um you can see in the bottom right hand corner there are colored bins i use these books these colored bins for decodables and um, books that I use in small groups. You can see the one bin in the middle. It's a white bin. It's actually an ice bucket from Walmart is actually where that came from. And if you say, well, why didn't you buy all of the bins? Because actually they, at the time when I was out searching for bins, it was years ago and there wasn't as many choices and options as there are now. So when I purchased this bin from Walmart, I thought, okay, well, I'm gonna purchase one. I'm gonna get the number and I'm gonna go online and see if they have more. Well, it's an ice bucket. And at the time, like my store had one and no other stores in town had one and online they were very limited. So I ended up turning that one white um, bin into the book hospital because we want students to, if they, if a, if a book is ripped or it's falling apart or the spine is, is detaching from the pages, we, I wanted my students to be able to have a place that they could put the books so that um, I could take care of them properly, keeping everything very well organized. This is free. This is just a side note. If you have scoop rockers in your classroom, which again, I'm a big fan of flexible seating. You don't have to have 
all the fancy things to have flexible seating. Flexible seating really comes down to choice. But um, these scoop rockers, you can see them in this bottom picture, um, I know are really popular because they're very inexpensive, but um, they're kind of cumbersome. So what I found is I found a plastic bin from Big Lots and it fits, um, I believe four, four or five of them um, perfectly. And so it was a great way to corral those, those um, scoop rockers. What about student materials? Now, student materials, again, you might have a system and a procedure. I'm just going to share what mine was and maybe possibly give you ideas as well. So I had this little um, ca uh, cubby bin and um, every student had a cubby and I would just um, print off their a name label with their picture. And then this bin was for any work that wasn't finished or complete or sometimes um, you know, you're, you're working on an art project, maybe they were at creation station and they didn't get to finish, so they can take that, the, the unfinished part and the pieces and the, the materials that they need and go put it in their, um, in their cubby. Also, like books or things that um, maybe you, they use in a lesson with you, this is a great way for them to store their individual materials and um, always it's always available. They always know where it is. It's not in a backpack. It's not in a folder that accidentally gets lost. I like to have a very central location that students know they can put stuff and it will stay there. Does that solve all the problems? No, it doesn't. But I try to like check off as many boxes as I can to try to eliminate as many problems as I can. Um, another idea are these baskets from the Dollar Tree. I love these baskets because they are rubber. So um, they have different ones, but I personally like these rubber ones. They have some plastic ones. I don't like the plastic ones as, as much. These rubber ones have, again, lasted years. I've had a couple that the handles end up breaking off, but for the most part, these have lasted many years. And at the end of the year, believe it or not, I just throw them in the dishwasher. I just throw them in the dishwasher, take, take the labels off, throw them in the dishwasher, sanitize them, and then put new labels on for the next year students and they worked like a charm. These were what we called their book bags or book bins. And these were for alphabet journals and writing journals and the books that they, that they would um, get from our classroom library would all go into this so that they could actually carry this around because they're not gonna carry around the cubby, but they can carry around this basket. Served me well, a dollar a piece. Um, now we know the Dollar Tree is $1.25, but um, you can purchase them in bulk. No, I do not work for any of these companies. I'm just sharing what has worked for me, and hopefully it will work for you as well. Let's talk about student tools. And I have tools in quotes because I believe, and I always teach students, that these are tools we use that help us to be successful and learn. So yes, it's a crayon, or yes, it's a pencil, or an eraser, or scissors, but these are tools, and when you, when you, it's semantics, but when you use words like tools, put your tools away, it has a different little connotation than, you know, something we're playing with, and, and we're just going to break. These are, these are specific things that we use to help make us successful, so I always call them student tools, and um, I found that um, using these caddies, these particular ones are from Lakeshore. I've tried the ones from Target. I've tried the ones from the dollar store. I find them to be a little bit too flimsy and um, they end up cracking. So I prefer these ones. These ones are a little heavy duty. Again, run them through the dishwasher at the end of the school year. I do have like a special little concoction. Um, it's Dawn dish soap and Cascade powder. Um, dishwashing like you put in your dishwasher. So you use super hot water, you put a little bit of Dawn dish soap and the powdered Cascade and put it, um, soak these in hot water. And then I just take a magic eraser and all the crayon and almost, I sh let me take that back. You're, they're not gonna be 100% perfect, but they are 90% clean and remove, you've removed most of the writings and things that kids do on them. So I have made them like new every year by, by doing that little concoction. So um, I know that community supplies is one of those things once, um, once we had distance learning and we didn't want students to share supplies that this 
became more of an issue. But um, I prefer community supplies. Um, I feel like it eliminates a lot of classroom management issues. But um, if you have to do individual supplies, I don't have ideas for that because <laughs> I love community supplies. But they do have like the little containers for crayons and and um, and you can put them in cubbies and there's little containers. You could put them in those in these pouches as well would be an alternative. Um, again, you don't need one this big. They make them smaller like this size. Um, they have some that are a little bit bigger than this as well. And you could fit a pair of scissors and crayons and everything. And again, I can promise you that these are very durable. And I always wanna show you what real life looks like because isn't it great that we see pictures from um, organizing gurus and, and, and um, I recently saw a picture of Khloe Kardashian's pantry and it's just immaculate and amazing. And we all awe and, and oh, isn't that amazing? But there's a real life behind it. Those of us with kids understand that, right? The houses in the magazines are like that for a picture and then somebody pulls out a toy and somebody spills punch. And, and so let's, let's look at the real side of a classroom that is a hot mess. So this big hot mess with all the books on the floor was pulling out all of the books that I had and going through them. This was before, this was actually the weekend that I found out I was gonna be teaching kindergarten. And I had taught second grade before that, so I was petrified to teach kindergarten, but it was an opportunity that I wanted to, to accept and I wanted to challenge myself. I was petrified, but I'm so glad I did because I've never looked back. But I had all the, my own kids' books, and so I was like, okay, I got to build a classroom library, and if you're a new teacher, don't worry, we've all been there. So go to garage sales, go to consignment stores, go to the thrift store, ask your friends, ask your neighbors. If you have your own kids, go through their books that they don't use or want anymore. So these are a lot of my kids, my own kids books. And um, we put, we just, my kids dumped them out on the floor and I just started going through them. I just started going through them and books that weren't um, necessarily appropriate for kindergarten, maybe the little kids, you know, the little, um, toddler board books, those I didn't take, but I sorted them. You have to sort everything first and remember, make those three piles. What am I gonna keep? What am I gonna donate or sell? And what am I gonna trash? And so, and always that trash pile, I, I if you're if you're in admin, you're probably not gonna like what I say, but I always like, would like put it out so that other teachers could look because there's always somebody who, who's your trash is somebody else's treasure. But um, so think about that before you actually get rid of something. And um, then there are all these bins down here. So you can see these bins. I have had a love-hate relationship with bins for many, many, many years. I've tried all different kinds. I've, you can see these are all bins that I purchased at some point or another. And then you almost hate to get rid of them because you're like, I purchased them, but they're not working. So this is real life. This is real life. I feel like, it, organization is constantly evolving you're changing to meet the needs of your students but also yourself we all grow as individuals and and um, as educators and so maybe what worked for you three years ago doesn't work for you now and again give yourself permission that it's okay to change your mind and it's okay to move to something else and then um, this other picture was my teacher closet and yes, there are areas that were super organized, but there were also those weeks and those times where I got overwhelmed and then I would find out, oh, the principal is bringing somebody in to, you know, see your classroom or, or you're, you know, so-and-so is going to come and observe you. And it would be like, I would just kind of like push everything into the closet. So real life wants you to know that everything is not always perfectly rainbow coordinated, you know, Roy G. Biv, everything's not perfect. Um, there is a real side that also things get messy sometimes and that's okay. And we just take a breath and find what works best for us and make it work, make it work. Find, um, also go visit other classrooms. Some of the best ideas I've received is going into other classrooms and seeing what has worked for other teachers. What has worked for other teachers might work for me, might not, but it might work. There's sometimes you get great ideas like, oh, I never thought to, use hangers for my anchor charts or I never thought about using clothes pins for my anchor charts so go visit other classrooms check out online type in teacher organization because there are tons of ideas and then 
after it's all cleaned up and after we put it all back together, because remember, if you organize so that everything has a place, it's easy to put things back. After you have organized it, you've labeled everything, you can put everything back in its place. Might take, a, might take a little bit of time after school or before school or on the weekends, but eventually it all goes back and, and um, then you have a nice organized space, which then makes you feel better. I know I feel so much better when everything is organized. When I have a lot going on and, a, and piles, I, I, feel, I feel that anxiety and I feel almost like I'm suffocating. And then I just work at it a little bit and put everything back in its place. And I feel so much better. Organization does help. So hopefully you have learned a few tips and tricks. Again, um, reach out to me if you have any questions. I'm happy to share um, my thoughts and opinions. Again, all, the, all these opinions are my own. It's, this is what works for me. It, this is what worked in my classroom. Um, and you can email me at abby at kindergartenchaos.com. And I think... That is the end of our presentation. So thank you for joining me for Organize It. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Abigail, so much for presenting this awesome information today. ESGI is proud to sponsor these webinars every month. If you are a current ESGI teacher, we thank you and suggest that you check out all the new features. If you have never tried ESGI, sign up now for a free 60-day trial using promo code CHAOS. Don't forget to check your email in the next week for your certificate of attendance and a link to this broadcast. Follow ESGI's YouTube channel to watch previous webinars. Thanks again and have a good night.